let's talk about something. What would be good to talk about? Oh, I've got it. Why don't we talk about the end of the world? The young man continued talking cheerfully. He was like a kid telling his parents about how much fun he had that day at school. That was how he talked to me. End of the world? Please. Just a crazy maniac spouting nonsense. That's what I thought at the time. What do you think? It's interesting, isn't it? Have I piqued your curiosity yet, Mr. Martin? Hold on a second, kid. How do you know my name? <laughs> I just know. Now let's talk all about you, shall we? You've worked for the baby for three years, haven't you? What, did you look into my background? Before that, you served time in prison for eight years. That must have been awful for you. You were released early for good behavior. For a guy that got convicted of murder, you certainly got out quickly. Did you like living with your girlfriend? I'm pretty sure you did. I'm talking about the girlfriend you shot. Her name was... Edda? I think it's pretty rude of you to talk about her. That Edda was quite the drug addict, wasn't she? And you did your best to try and keep her off the stuff, didn't you? Goodness, that's a pretty difficult thing to pull off. Were you... in love then? Are you asking me for a beating? Then she quit the drug somehow. All was bliss and she would wait for you to come home every night. Together the two of you were quite happy. Are you asking for a beating? Answer me. But then one night, when you returned to your room, you saw something that really made your blood boil. There she was, with her old boyfriend. She'd been doing drugs again. It was written all over her face. But once she saw you standing there, all she could do was say the same thing over and over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But you shot her, along with her ex-boyfriend. That was your story at the trial, after all. Why'd you lie? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The truth was, she killed herself. Your lawyer figured out from the lab reports that she shot herself. They found traces of gunpowder on her right hand. But when you testified in court, you stuck to the story that you gunned her down. Tell the truth, she literally begged you to kill her, didn't she? Ha! Am I right? I'm dead on, aren't I? I knew you weren't the one who shot her. <laughs> and she really was begging you to shoot her, wasn't she? Oh, I could just see it. Please, Martin, shoot me. Please don't look at me like that. Shoot me now. I want you to kill me! She did it to herself! I didn't shoot her, man! Isn't it amazing that I was able to figure it out? I'm right, aren't I? You're wrong. You made the decision to leave her behind. And by doing that, you gave her just what she wanted. Like hell. I'm right. It was the same with your mother. <laughs> Your mother froze to death. She died unexpectedly when you were 10 years old. You've got a long history of abandoning women, don't you? <laughs> I'm right again? I knew it! Amazing! I really have a gift for this! What a skill! Every night, your mother would get stinking drunk and you'd carry her home. Isn't that right? And your mother would always tell you to just leave her where she was, there on the street. But you wouldn't listen. Instead, you'd carry her home every time. But then came that one night. No, Mom. It's too cold. You can't His weather's sleep fine. Here. Stop calling on me. Just leave me right here. Mom, wake up! Yeah. <laughs> 
You left her there. Isn't that true? You left your mother there. The next day, the police came to your house and told you that your mother had frozen to death. You thought that what happened wasn't your fault. After all, you had left her there because she told you to. And you're right, it wasn't your fault. Your mother and your girlfriend both wanted to die. You were helping people who wanted to die to find some relief. Why torture yourself? You did the right thing. Look, you freed the two of them from the agonies of their worthless lives. Now there's Ava. She too wishes to die, Martin. It was at that moment that the devil arrived. I walked by the devil, careful not to look. Don't look. Don't you dare look. <laughs>